Hey friends, it's Tracy, my flip-flop Santa, and my cheesy twinkling lights are back again. We are sharing some Christmas in July inspiration with you. I am so excited to share my gingies with you today. I have a gingerbread crafts that I want to share. Thank you so much for being here, and let's get started. Okay guys, I have some old jeans. These are not mendable. These are not something that I can reuse because you can't see the front. Um, these are jeans that have been worn out and um, they're not, I mean, they're not good enough to be able to have someone else wear them. The reason I say this is because I got some very mean comments uh, when I posted it on Facebook. And so this is the reason out of the goodness of my heart, I was just kind of showing how I cut off the pockets of old jeans that were going to be discarded anyway. So this is what I do. I cut out, cut the pocket off with my fabric scissors and uh, I have a pocket just like this to go ahead and paint on. Let's work on the cute little gingy. I'm using this milk chocolate brown paint. It is Americana color. And so I just guesstimate and just kind of uh, hand dry draw a circle around. Now, as I mentioned in the snowman uh, video, that you can use a jar or a cup or something to give you a bowl or something in your craft room that can give you a circle. So uh, I gave this two coats of the brown paint. So then I also use the uh, plaster color paint just to go around the edges just to give it a border and I'm really liking that addition to the pocket just to kick them up a notch okay so then now that those are dry I'm going to draw out the eyes and I do the same thing with a black sharpie marker just make some uh ovals at the top and just go ahead and start painting those. Now I kept um, the next part in because I wanted to show y'all how I fix when I make an error because yes I do make errors. Now um, I try my best to be consistent with the eyelashes but on the right eye I got a little too thick and so I was not happy with it. it this I guess though just the way that the paint dried on the pocket I'm like yeah that eyelash is not that ain't working for me so I took a baby wipe and just kind of wiped off a little bit of the black but I'm like oh that still is not working too good so then I go back and do the eyelash again and I'm like uh that I still don't like that either and then later I go back and I paint all of that because I'm like, girl, you got to put some icing around the top of the gingy. So yeah, those eyebrows were way too high. So that brown is going to dry and I'm going to work on the cheeks next. And so I'm using my stencil brush and some barn red paint. And uh, the same way I like to do is just uh, take my brush and just give some rectangle cheeks. Now that barn red is a ceram coat color. And so the reason that I always say that is because I get questions a lot of private messages for people that they want to know. Friends that want to know the exact paint colors. Okay, so then I'm using that same barn red color that I use for the cheeks and a flat paintbrush and going around and making some stripes along the edge of the pocket. So then now we're going to try for the third time to get my eyelashes for her right eye correct. So I just go ahead and make some eyelashes and then kind of bring some eyebrows down a little bit more uh, so that I have room at the top to add my icing. So then I take my little detailing brush and add the white of the eyes as well as the uh, whimsical features for her cheeks. I like that look like that. Now for her nose, I'm using this true red color. It's by Americana and I just take a, a round brush and just do two slashes just to make the heart for her nose buttermilk paint to add some icing around her face. Now first I pulled out a liner brush and that the individual brush was was separating on me. So I'm like, yeah, that ain't going to work. So I pulled out a round brush and started uh, just kind of giving the swirlies around her face just to give her some icing. Now I like the curly, you know, curliness of it because I just kind of take my time and just go back and just kind of fill it in as I need to. 
Then I'll just take my detailing brush and draw out a little mouth, just giving her a sweet little smile. And I make it a little thick on one side so that I can put a white uh, swoosh in there just to give it some extra detailing. And so then I add uh, just a white stripe on one side of the red stripes just to give out you know more dimension I don't know like I say the beauty is in the details and so I just like to share for inspiration uh you know I love to see your ideas uh and what you do with it uh, as long as I inspire you you do your own thing and everyone will be happy okay so then now also what I'm going to do is add some um little highlights to her nose and then here that's where I show you I add this just the sweet little swoosh in her little mouth her little smile just looks so cute then of course I take my uh, fine sharpie marker and then just also add some doodling around the edge of the pockets as well as around the face because as I say, the beauty is in the details and I love my doodles and my squiggles. And so it just really kind of makes my little hand painted uh, projects pop. So then uh, now I'm going to add some splattering. I do black first and then I go back and add white to it. And so uh, for whatever reason, I did not get the black on there, but I did. I added black first and then I go back and add white. Okay, so then now to kick it up a notch, I'm using some white puffy paint and this is just something that you can get in the craft store anywhere the fabric paint is sold you can also get it on Amazon uh, but it's pretty easy to find and so I'm just going around and just giving some squiggles around it now I let that dry overnight because puffy paint does take a little bit to dry I pulled out some of my homespun fabric to create a hanger for my pockets and I can find homespun fabric at Hobby Lobby, usually Walmart and jubileefabric.com has lots of fun designs. All right, so then I just cut off, you know, about an inch or a little less than an inch strip and then I just tie it off and just attach it to each of the ends of the pockets just to make a little hanger. Okay, for so for the gingerbread I'm using these 18 millimeter uh, rusty jingle bells and I got these from factory direct and I uh, got those a few years ago I also have a rusty heart like a uh, primitive country heart that I've had on hand I'm not quite sure where I got that from but what I did is I just took uh, my little mini hole punch um, that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby in the jewelry section and I just you know I'm able to punch a hole in that small metal like that so then I'm just uh, kind of threading on my jingle bells and then I'm going to tie that into you know a little bow and that uh, string what I'm using is hip hemp cording that I get in the jewelry section over at uh, Walmart or any craft store should have it in the jewelry section but it just makes uh, my little primitive country projects look really cute and rustic these just make such cute little gifts you could just change out you know the characters uh, to match your style and design now I am a gift card uh, a fan and so you know this is perfect for a little gift card uh, or a small little gift a little trinket that kind of thing this next gingerbread project is going to be sharing uh, an arrangement that I put together in a bucket uh, I got the bucket from Hobby Lobby I had the stuffed candy canes my sweet awesome mother-in-law is a sewer and she made those candy canes for me uh, several years ago I decorate with them every year those stuffed gingerbread men are something that I found at Walmart uh, last season and they were in the Christmas section they're so cute they're decorated just like that um, what I'm 
showing you here is I'm going to grunge up. I used my sweet friend, uh, Tracy Campbell of My Sweet Home Living. I used her grunge mix. I'm going to be doing that. I'll just kind of set it to music just to kind of show. I'm also going to be putting a link to the original video uh, of what I did that you can hear me in real time. I had made this. Uh, project made this arrangement just a few days before Christmas and so last year 2022 so but I wanted to because I'm constantly getting new viewers new followers I'm just a, a little bitty fish in the big sea of YouTube algorithms so I so appreciate new friends following me they haven't seen all of my videos uh, so yes I will go ahead and leave that link to the original video if you would like to see that what I'm showing you here are just some peppermints also that my sweet mother-in-law made for me she just is a sewer like I said and I'm just going to be putting all of this together and uh, leaving you links and different things of what I did or, or you can watch Watch the original video and you can hear me of every single thing I did of how I grunged up these candles and all that stuff these candles came from Hobby Lobby
Let me show you how I painted the sign. So this uh, chip decor sign is from Hobby Lobby and uh, I just am giving it a coat of cinnamon brown paint. I'm going to use some crackle. This is the crackle medium by folk art and I just take my sponge brush and just go around and just make sure that it's really thick because I do feel that that gives me the best uh, cracks if I get it thick so it's dry now it took a few hours. I let it dry overnight so I have this large brush that I also got from Hobby Lobby and some buttermilk paint and I just went over it and then it cracked as well as it did I didn't really stress about it I uh, wasn't too happy with it but we're just gonna go with that all right so then I'm just taking a flat paintbrush and just going around just eyeballing it just to give it a border now one could uh, you know get your ruler out and you know uh, just pencil it off but I just kind of eyeballed it so then now I'm taking another flat paintbrush just going around giving it some stripes and then I'm going to uh, write out hand letter Christmas joy now I did uh, what I'm doing now is like air drawing it that's what I always uh, advise uh, you know suggest to people who want to hand letter but I got my letters a little too big so I was gonna write Christmas wishes but that didn't turn out so I ended up going with Christmas joy even though I'm using the number two flat paintbrush, which I uh, do most often when I'm doing my hand lettering, I did get off a bit. And uh, so we just kind of went with it. I did not want to repaint this sign. So I just ended up uh, writing joy to have Christmas joy because Christmas is all about joy the joy of the Lord is in our hearts uh, guys as always the uh, free fonts are in the link tree in the description box if that is something that you are interested in to find free fonts that you can practice uh, you know just download them from defont.com and then practice to make your words okay so then now um, I am going to use this holly green uh, paint by Americana and then I'm also using a uh, um, a brush I think this was maybe a little round brush I just kind of like eyeball it and I'm giving it a shadowing and I know I'm just gonna kind of like uh, flow let this flow here and kind of show you how I just go and turn this sign into a uh, Christmas candy Christmas joy sign I'm using a an ivory color Posca paint marker you can find these in my Amazon shop which is also linked in my link tree and so now I am just going in between the green and the red just to make the letters pop now these Posca pens are uh, paint pens but I 
uh, am going to be using a spray varnish uh, sealer because if I use my liquid sealer, it does tend to smear. And so I'm going to use a spray varnish so that I do not have any smearing for my project. I am also going to show you how I correct uh, some little errors. I get some of my letters a little too close, so I just take my detail brush just to go through and just give it a little bit of the color of the background paint, and then that kind of helps with distinguishing the letters if I can get through there. If not, then I just kind of let it go. And uh, so then now what I'm gonna do is uh, actually take that Ivory Posca. It's a 5M, it's the largest one. And I'm just going and just making my candy, my hard candy Christmas sign. That is what I'm calling it. Then I'm going to take that large paintbrush and I'm dipping it in some red paint and going in between the uh, stripes just to give it just some extra color. So then now I take my fine Sharpie marker, just going through and highlighting uh, a bit and just give it the black outline. I really feel that that makes my letters pop. So then I'm taking my flat paintbrush and my favorite shading method by dipping my uh, half of my brush in paint the other half in clean water I blend on a paper towel and then I'm just shading around my sign and so then I take a stylus and I'm dipping it in that buttermilk paint just to give it a dot kind of on the side of those red dots in the around the sign so then I do the same thing by adding a dot to the middle of my happy dots so I'm taking my detailing brush just going around and just giving it some little squiggles around just to kind of separate the borders and just enhance the sign it's just really fun to see this Christmas candy sign come to life and then of course I give it some uh, brown of the splatter as well as some of the buttermilk splatter okay so then for my gingerbread this gingerbread man came from the Dollar Tree and I I wanted to use the back of it. Uh, the Dollar Tree uh, Gingerbread Man has the raised uh, things on it, so I just take my heat tool and get those off. I'm gonna use the back of it anyway, but I didn't want those raised areas. And I'm using some spackle to cover up the hole from the little hanger, because I didn't want that. And then I give it two coats of the cinnamon color acrylic paint that is uh, how I painted my gingerbread and then I'm going to give it some black shading and so I do that just with a thinner flat paintbrush a smaller flat paintbrush just go around and just give it some shading I like the black on it I really feel that it just kind of makes it pop when I get all of my stuff uh, finished and just really bring him to life for the cheeks, I'm using Barn Red Acrylic Paint, and I just stipple that on just to give him some cheeks. Then I'm just using my black fine Sharpie marker just to draw out the eyes. I like the more almond-shaped eyes. You could uh, also use the end of a paintbrush or a marker just to give it two dots, whatever I you know look that you like but this is what I like I trace it out in the black marker then I go back in and fill it in with my black paint and so then uh, for the like enhancements I'm using uh, buttermilk acrylic paint and just with a flat paintbrush I'm just gonna start you know bringing him to life just by adding some icing on the legs and the arms and I use my detailing brush just to give it some thin lines I also use that number two uh, flat paintbrush just to give it the icing around the head and it's just so fun to just use paint and bring these little characters to life
I'm just giving some squiggles and some doodles around my gingerbread just to, you know, just enhance them a bit more. That little red heart, that's more of a primitive heart, a wooden heart that I had on hand. I, gosh, it was, I didn't have the package, so I'm not quite sure. I had them on hand for uh, quite a long time, but you know, maybe you can find, if you're interested in those uh, longer hearts like that, maybe somewhere where wooden hearts are sold. And so then I'm just adding uh, some of the finishing touches, uh, adding some splatters. And uh, when I was going to detail a little bit, eh, got my hand in there. So I just cover it up with paint. No problem. Because uh, yeah, the things are going to happen. But as I always say, the beauty is in the detail. Uh, and so I just give a little sanding to my uh, red heart and that red heart I actually painted it with primary red and then I'm going to just glue that there uh, there in the middle I'm going to put this to the side because I'm going to share next how I make my rustic burlap bases for my wreaths now it's been a little bit since I've uh, shared one of these um, but what I did guys is I cut uh, some strips of burlap fabric and what I'm showing you there with my hand I took them outside guys and and anytime I work with cut burlap like this, I always, always, always wear a mask because uh, the burlap has a lot of fibers and strings and I don't want to breathe that. So I just using some pipe cleaners. Now I know I'm going a little bit fast here, but I do have a slow down step-by-step -step tutorial. I will link to it uh, in the iCard as well as in the description box below. If you need a uh, slower in-step version step by step of how I make my rustic burlap basis again uh, it's been a little bit since I have done one of these and so I'm bringing it out back again just to share because I wanted to show a little bit different so I'm just taking a pipe cleaner just threading that through I cut off six inches of burlap I just buy them off of the bolt at the um, Hobby Lobby or Walmart has it as well and so I just cut six six inch strips and so then I'm just uh, kind of doing like a bubble technique but I'm uh, I took them outside to get the rustic uh, feel of it I took them outside and I just ran my hand over it so that it would kind of fray a little bit as I said always wear I always wear my mask because I do not want to breathe those fibers and so again if you want a step-by-step -step slower version look for the link and I will show you exactly how I do this um, just by you know using a wire form from the Dollar Tree and then I just twist it just make little bubbles like this kind of going back and forth just to give it a uh, rustic look for my little Christmas Joy gingerbread wreath. And then this is how this wreath looks. Now I used 10 six inch strips for this particular rustic burlap base. All right, here are the uh, homespun patterns that I'm using. They all came from Hobby Lobby. So then I just cut off strips of that tearing it because I like the uh, torn ragged edges. And then that is what I'm going to tie on to my uh, burlap base in between some of the burlap I'm just going to tie strips on there now um, it wasn't quite enough once I got them tied on so then I'm going to show you how I kind of make it a little bit more full with the uh, homespun fabric I just tie knots on the uh, in some of the homespun and then I'm just going to uh, you know, just attach them with some rusty uh, safety pins that I, well, I had gotten a package of silver uh, safety pins from Walmart, and then I used my 
friend, Linda, who is Faith Chick 777 I used her technique of rusting small metals. And so then the rusty safety pins are wonderful to attach some of my rustic or homespun bows. And then also I'm going to go back later and add some jingle bells also to this wreath with some of those rusty safety pins. Look for Linda's technique uh, or her video. I will have a link for it in the description box below. Again, to attach these homespun fabric uh, pieces onto this wreath, what I'm doing is going in between the burlap and then actually slipping underneath that wire frame. And then that is how I am attaching this homespun fabric. And I'm just kind of trying to alternate them so they're not clumped up together or have, uh, you know, certain patterns together. I just kind of alternate these three. It just looks so pretty with all of this burlap and uh, homespun fabric. It just looks so pretty. Okay, so then now I'm going to attach my sign. And I totally changed my mind when it came to how I was going to attach the sign. Uh, I was going to put it, you know, on the side and then have the gingerbread on the side. But as I was kind of laying it out, I was like, oh, that would look cute just like that. But then I was covering up his legs. So then I'm like, hey, what can I do? So I'm going to be doing a little surgery. So don't cringe, okay? Because uh, no gingerbread men were hurt in this process. <laughs> so I'm just taking my box blade uh, from the Dollar Tree and I just gave, you know, I just cut him in half and uh, like where I wanted, uh, like underneath that red heart, I probably would have done it a little bit different if I would not have already glued the heart on there, but it turned out really cute. And so just by scoring that uh, on my uh, mat, I am able to, you know, softly and protectively get my gingerbread man apart. Okay, so then I'm laying out my sign the way that I need to. Now, I don't want him to look odd, you know, with his legs like that. That looks really weird. So I end up, you know, gluing it where I think that it looks nice. And I just love this, the way that, you know, it turned out. Probably if I would have decided to, you know, when I first started with the sign, I was going to, I had a different vision, but then once it all came together, we just kind of roll with the flow. Hello. And so then see now it just looks like he's a taller gingerbread man. And I think he looks so cute. Yeah, just like that, guys. He does. He just looks so cute. Okay, so to attach him, I'm using those um, one inch cable ties, you know, they get from Amazon. And so that is what I attach uh, to the back of him. I, you know, just put uh, several on those and just use pipe cleaners to attach him to the frame so that he is all nice and secure. So here is where I uh, go back and I make some bows out of the uh, homespun. I had torn off more strips than what I needed. So I made little knots in them. And so I'm just attaching small safety pins. Again, if you're interested in uh, the video of rusting small metals, I look for a the description or look in the description box below and so then I just attach them with the safety pins right through the burlap just right on top and it just uh, turned out wonderful so for the like uh, the like the neck of my gingerbread I just have this coordinating piece of homespun now I've had this homespun on hand for several years so I'm not quite sure where I got that from but you can check Hobby Lobby or jubileefabrics.com is another great place to find homespun fabric. Uh, okay, this is what I use to cover the back of my wreaths as well as use some grapevine wire. Uh, both of these came from Hobby Lobby. Okay, now guys, I have had some of these muslin homespun uh, peppermints on hand for a little, uh, for a bit, for a few years. I've had some of these. My sweet mother-in-law made me some of these as bowl fillers and, uh, I love them so much. So I decided to use some of those safety pins, attach them to the burlap as well as some jingle bells. Now these are 30 M 
uh, millimeter jingle bells that came from Hobby Lobby and the peppermints. I know that I'm going to get questions about that. My sweet mother-in-law made those for me a long time ago, but they don't look that hard. It just looks like she sewed them and just added some gingham check fabric. And then what I did is I just added some glitter to the top of them and uh, I just love them so much. And I love, you know, just attaching the jingle bells bells to this burlap wreath. I also stuck in a couple of my homespun candy canes that I had on hand. I do have a video for those, so I will have a link in the description for my homespun candy canes. Guys, those turned out so cute. Isn't this wreath adorable? I just cut off sprigs of greenery and just glued it in between the burlap and this Christmas joy wreath just really brings joy to my heart. See, I told you, no gingerbread men were harmed in this process because he is so happy. Look at his or her little face, just a big smile on her face, and I just love it so much. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Here are more videos that you may like. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support. God bless you, and we will see you in the next one.